All right, greetings, YouTube. As you know, I don't usually do videos on uh, low-end vacuums or vacuums I feel that are uh, made in Malaysia or something like that. But today is a little different. We have interesting piece of Dyson history. This is a DC-15. This was the first ball to hit the U.S. market. It was a prototype that wasn't really quite ready for prime time, but they sold it anyways. So these machines were pretty bad in a lot of different ways, uh, though Dyson was really trying hard when they made this. Um, so it has some premium features on it and some not so premium features. Um, so first off, we're going to get just talk a little bit about the swivel neck or the ball. You have a release pedal in the rear, and you have this. Now the rotation here, we'll focus a little bit more on the cleaner head. Rotation there is actually quite minimal. There's not actually a lot of rotation here. Um, furthermore, it's awkward and it's really heavy. It, it weighs in at about 24 pounds or so. Um, so especially when we compare this to a newer Dyson, it just it doesn't cut the cake at all. And there's some really queer... Uh, weird quirky features uh, first off is this hose just hanging off the side here with a valve um, so you can actually see the valve switch open and like right here I can reach in here and tell you that there is a clog <laughs> look at that isn't that handy um, so we have that that's that's super weird um, you have this large amount of play in the machine. When they were new, they had the exact same play in them. So maybe it's gotten worse over time, but they've always been jiggly. Uh, you have this very narrow hose here uh, with an extra super narrow tool set uh, on here. So that's its own tool set. Now, it does share parts. A cyclone, what appear, this is what appears to be a DC-14 cyclone assembly. Except, what's different is the filter, which they'd later use on the 14, but this guy, so that you can't shut it without a filter. Now, they quickly removed this on the 14, even though it has the molding for it on the 14, and on all further Dysons. They found out it's far more profitable if a customer ruins their vacuum and runs it without a filter. Um, uh, another couple quirky things about this machine is... Turn on the bottom side, and we can take a look at the drive. Uh, well, if we look at the drive system, it is almost identical to the late model Hoover Savvies. In fact, you can pull, you can mismatch the trannies together and make a Hoover Savvy tranny and motor fit this if the gears aren't too bad in this. It's kind of the Frankenstein thing you can do, uh, but you can do it. Um, another oddity. Uh, with this machine is it has a metal base plate. It's the only Dyson to my knowledge that has a metal base plate uh, that is a some sort of low-grade stainless steel. Um, your brush roller is pretty aggressive so it, it, it cleaned all right. It wasn't nothing to write home about but it, it was you know on the level at least in terms of how it cleaned. And it appears I have in my turning upside down have dropped out the little wheels I don't really do much but they're there so I must now find them and put them back in before I return this to the customer. You also have end caps with out a ball bearing. So you just had this little sleeve bearing in here uh, as well. Now this is a newer brush roller with the old ones they were all one piece and then they had to switch to a different kind of plastic because they were getting chewed up. So a lot of revisions went into that. Um, and you can just see how complex some of these mechanisms are on this. This, is, this one's actually in really good condition for its age. These aren't common to come in uh, in any sort of working order. This is an 05, give you an idea how old this is. So now I've turned it on its side and I want to talk about two other things that were um, a bizarre, bizarre on Dyson's part and what they did. So we're gonna have to put the camera up a little higher. 
for y'all to see this, but we got. All right, so we are going to take this cow bar off. And why am I just randomly going to take a duct off? Because I want to show you something that's extremely common with these um, to go wrong. There's two things in here that will go wrong. Uh, so most companies would think there's dust going through this, this duct. So let's not put anything important. Let's just make this a duct. And if we need to put wiring or, you know, at least if you're putting wiring, you double insulate it, right? Um, so <laughs> lo and behold, in the duct work uh, is a circuit board. And this circuit board uh, controls a few different things on the Dyson, but it's there. It's covered in dust. You can just see the dust there. Uh, and this was a fail point. As you could imagine, dust moving past the circuit board just kind of did funny things. Not to mention the static electricity. Now what we also have are these two wires that look like phone wires almost. That's how thin these are, this gauge. And they are a silicone wire. But they run all the way, there you can see the motor, they run all the way up through here and there's what flexes to the power head. So often what happens is these guys uh, will break and then the power head will not work. Uh, so that's another thing. And really, I don't really know anybody would order that genuine part. People were often would just pop out this little rubber guy right here and they would put in whatever wires they had laying around. Um, and again, <laughs> you have wires and circuit boards in the duct work of this vacuum. Um, just to give you an idea how crazy the Dyson engineers were when they were making this. And this was so not ready for prime time. Again, just to show you where that is on the machine, it's the wackiest thing. You have this duct cover, and you can see this duct cover is filthy. Um, so, and this is, this is not the intake where the, of the vacuum, this is the intake to the motor. So everything in there does pass through this filter, but that filter, as we know, is only good for, you know, two to five microns in size. So you really did have a lot of dust uh, just moving through here. Um, really a ridiculous design, handled poorly. Um, the handle on this, oddly enough, right here, uh, they used this on the DC-14 and then they flipped it around and scrapped it. Uh, so on later models, uh, especially when we're talking about 14s, uh, there's actually two different handles that they put on. So they use the same handle, but they use a different wand inside, I guess I should say, because the, the diameter of this is different than the inch and a quarter of 14 uses. Um, now it does have a nice little reminder here telling you to change the filter, which is kind of a nice thing. The other thing that's bizarre is how to get to the HEPA filter. Um, so, usually, on a vacuum, a HEPA filter goes in some sort of plastic casing, and but not on this one. On this one, and the pro tip here would be to remove the hose, but I'm feeling lazy, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, that's the HEPA filter. So the HEPA filter also is the same piece that the Cyclone would sit and lock into. Um, Again, very, very bizarre. Um, and then we can see in here, this is empty. So rather than a motor being here like a 17 or some of the others, it's just a vent that's going here. And you can see the, the, the large dust that does pass through these machines. This is obviously more than carbon dust. Um, so th this is one of the machines where we really started realizing that Dyson was quite full of shit. Yeah, you are gonna have to change your filters. Um, on a regular basis. Um, but yeah, so that's a DC-15, just in pieces, just to, sh just to show you kind of what it is, a quick video, what is a DC-15, because there aren't a lot of these out of here. And I would imagine that if you were a vacuum collector, this might be something you'd put in your collection at this point. Now that these are all, you know, 10, 15 plus years old. Um, and these were swiftly replaced by the DC-25. Uh, they only made these for a couple years. So as always, please like, subscribe, comment below. If you have a DC-15 experience, I'd love to hear about it. 
Uh, and I'd love to hear what you replaced it with.